In a video I made a couple months ago regarding the entertainment industry, I suggested that there needs to be a certain amount of realism in order for people to connect with the characters in the story. After some thought, I believe I was wrong. In the comments on that video, a friend of mine, Goth at Funk, brought up musicals of the past. How realistic is it to just suddenly break out in a song? Yet we were somehow still able to connect with the characters in the story. It was a great point, and I've thought about it a lot since he said it. Though, to be fair, the general populace really can't handle musicals much anymore. To the modern audience, musicals are viewed as gaudy, corny, and cringy. But we obviously can still get into movies that are purposely ridiculous. You know, like Barbie. But who knows, with the next Joker movie potentially being a musical, maybe there's still a way that it can be done. I certainly hope it's not going to be like a dark Moulin Rouge sort of thing where they take random top hits from all over the 20th century, and the cast performs them in some dismal, dark sort of way. You know, to try to give them some extra meaning, you know. But there are tons of unrealistic characters and stories in movies that people connect with. Sometimes it's the fact that something is so unrealistic that it makes it worth watching. You know, because it takes us away from our real lives. What is it exactly that allows for that connection? You know, is it charisma of a character? Is it a new type of cinematography? Is it the soundtrack? It's probably the whole package. But where are these huge budget productions messing up? I think the focus should be just trying to make a great piece of entertainment in general. When movies become ideologically driven without being blatant about it, and it's always the same message, THE MESSAGE! They're normally not as entertaining. Especially when people eventually figure out what the messaging really is. And they block it like an annoying ad on a news website or something. You know, as to not be affected by it. We block a lot of things in order to not be affected by them. So, it's just kind of a normal thing we do. But Barbie was able to get away with it because it was just so over the top about it all. You know, it was blatant. You knew exactly what kind of mindset to put on in order to watch and enjoy the movie. You know, there was no guessing. It wasn't lying like Bob Iger trying to claim that there's no politics in their entertainment. I really don't like it when movies try to present themselves as being neutral, but by the end it's quite obvious that it has a certain kind of leaning. You know, especially to the point where it's almost like propaganda. Shame on me, I suppose, for not noticing. If it's... THE MESSAGE! or very similar, I'd like to know before watching the movie. You know, even though most big-budget movies are going to push this sort of thing, there are most definitely other movies that push a different type of message. Sometimes it's something the director finds important, the writer finds important, the actors find important. The message can be quite individualistic. It can teach people new concepts. But when it's THE MESSAGE over and over again, it can become quite dull and annoying. It's like how I often get bored with a lot of horror movies because many of them, to this day, rely on someone having an Abrahamic religious kind of mindset in order to be properly horrified. It's a mindset you used to be able to put on to enjoy a lot of mediocre entertainment of the past. It made it more thrilling, scary, rebellious, evil, and or righteous. To me, the female Ghostbusters movie would have done pretty decently, had it have followed the Barbie kind of model and just went really blatant with it. Now, personally, I actually enjoyed the Ghostbusters movie, the female Ghostbusters movie, but I had to put on a certain mindset in order to enjoy it. I knew that mindset ahead of time, so I was able to prepare. I ended up laughing out loud at least three times, if I'm to be honest, but it wasn't that great of a movie either. You know, it wasn't like Barbie, that's for sure. I loved Barbie, even though it was a giant piece of propaganda. I just think the way that some people got offended at the Ghostbusters movie was just silly. To me, it's an example of people getting offended just for the sake of being offended. In 1978, there was The Wiz, a completely reimagined, all-black cast version of The Wizard of Oz, with Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. I remember enjoying it when I was young, but I've only watched it in little pieces as an adult. You know, I, I have the movie on my computer, but I haven't just sat and watched the whole thing. I've always just skipped around a lot. Especially through some of the musical numbers. There were too many musical numbers as far as I'm concerned. They had, they had a musical number for the witch. You know, the evil witch. And it's just like, yeah, but it, I don't know. You know. I just know it's really corny in some areas. 
And again, some of the songs are they're they're just too long. There's too many of them, and some of them are just too generic sounding to just want to sit there and listen to. So I forward through some of them. But you know, at the same time, some of the corniness is what made it enjoyable. So it's kind of you know, eh. especially things like trash cans with teeth. I don't really know what the general consensus was when the movie was originally released in 1978. Maybe a bunch of people were really offended when it came out, who knows. If The Wiz were released today, would people call it woke just because of the casting? Or would there have to be actual messaging in it for it to be woke? I think it's sad that there's a number, a growing number of people, who call something woke if it simply doesn't have an all-white cast. Or, you know, at least mostly white cast. Yes, there is a lot of anti-whiteism going around. It's in so many places, and it's causing a lot of harm. But that doesn't mean that anytime someone who isn't white gets a lead part or a main supporting role, that it's a piece of woke propaganda. In your opinion, what does it take for a piece of entertainment to be considered woke? My definition of wokeness is when a dogmatic, well-organized, Ideological framework is used to dismantle the prevailing oppressive systems that make up society. And anyone who doesn't wish to participate in the dismantlement of those systems gets considered something that ends in istrophobic. It suggests that we should have no systems, no hierarchy, no standards, no roles, no rules, no customs, and no values. That we should be a blank slate. That the country and society can be a blank slate and then just allow multiculturalism to fill everything in, and, and that'll, that'll turn out great, right? It's the notion that the message is how things really are, even though it's blatantly not. It's a fictional world. It's a fantasy. It's not how things really are. And perhaps Hollywood is trying to bank on that kind of fantasy instead of making great entertainment that can take people away from things like corporate training seminars and the things that they have to do at their job. And so there are a lot of movies that have the message in them. Most of them are either Disney themselves or intellectual properties that they own that they're destructively milking for all they can. But again, to you, what does it take for a piece of entertainment to be considered woke? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.